because the church goes beyond the preacher the church goes beyond the choir the church goes beyond the position the church is all about Jesus Christ Listen, before we get into the message, I pray that you have a wonderful day today. Listen, it is Valentine's Day, but it doesn't make a difference whether you got a Valentine's or not. You've got the greatest Valentine you could ever have, and that's the love from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So celebrate today. Thank God for love. Thank God for the gift of life. Amen. And tell somebody you love them. Yeah. Don't do it by text. Don't send them an email. Pick up the phone, FaceTime somebody, and tell them, I love you today. Amen. Listen, Jocelyn is going to bless us with another selection, and then we'll have the message for the hour.
word of prayer. God, we thank you for this moment in time in which we prepare our hearts and minds to hear from you. Thank you, dear God, for your word. Thank you for how your word suits every need that we have before you. And so once again, God, we come before your throne asking that you provide the word that we need, not only for our condition and situation right now, but for a word that will help us to make it through this week. I pray, God, that you grant us a word of encouragement, a word of comfort, a word of hope, a word of declaration. I pray, dear God, that every person who has a need at the conclusion of it, by your divine intervention, that need will be met. And they'll leave this worship service declaring nobody did it but Jesus. God, I simply ask that you use me now. Even as I stand here, you stand inside of me. Even as I'm speaking, you take my voice. Even as I'm thinking, you take my mind. Have me to say, have me to do what it is you would have me to do. Again, bless every person. Bless those who are already saved. Thank you, God, for the relationship, the loving relationship they have with you. I'm also lifting up those who have heard of you but haven't accepted you. I pray, dear God, that, that somehow, some way, through this worship service, they will discover you as Lord, discover you as God, discover you as Savior. They will open up their hearts, let you in, and discover life brand new. God, have your way now. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank God. One more time, let's give it up for Sister Jocelyn Brown. Amen. Jocelyn has a flute in her throat. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that there is, there is, there is something inside of her that just, just comes out in such an in incredible way. Um, grateful for her presence. Grateful for her gift, grateful for the band, um, blessing us. I'm, I'm thankful for that rendition, I think made popular by, I think it was Whitney Houston who did this rendition. It's so funny because um, there were a couple of things that, that I learned growing up. One of the first few things I learned growing up was that song, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. And then the second was the scripture that we're about to read, John 3, 16. Those, those two things, Wow, God works in mysterious ways, where the foundation of, of many of our, of, our, of, our, of our understanding of Jesus Christ and Christianity. And so, yeah, let me call your attention. John 3, 16. You, now, listen, you shouldn't have to open up your Bible. You, you should not have to. If, if, well, I don't want to make any assumptions. But for anyone who doesn't know this, John 3, 16 is, should be in your top five. Amen. You know, we have top five lists for everything, you know, top five movies, favorite movies, favorite artists, favorite songs. Well, you need top five scriptures and John 316 ought to be in your top five. Amen. John 316. This is from the New Revised Standard Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Amen. This morning, I want to share with you from the subject, if it isn't love. Yeah, if it isn't love. Some of y'all, if you don't sit down and quit doing that new addition step right now, I see you, I see you already, already. That's that Bobby Brown spirit in you. You just got to cut loose. But, um, but yeah, I wanted to do a twist. It, it, Jocelyn um, did, yes, Jesus loves me. Um, and she had a twist on it. I wanted to do a different twist on this Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. I have preached from this countless times. And I am amazed by God that every time I go to the well, God provides a new drink for me. And so this morning we're looking at John 3, 16. If it isn't love. Absolutely, this is being preached because it is Valentine's Day. And I want to offer a few scenarios to you right now. There's a husband who has prepared an evening to remember. 
Yeah. He has shared with his wife that tonight is going to be special. He's encouraged her to pick out something nice to wear because they're going out to eat. He's not driving, she's not driving. He has a car service. Car's going to come and pick them up. Take them to a, a nice restaurant. Reservations have already been made. He's even selected the table in which they'll dine at. Upon their arrival, there will be a dozen of roses at the dinner table. He has it all planned out. Each course has been selected. The drink of choice has already been poured. He wants to show his wife his love and admiration for her after 10 years of being married. And so they dine together. From the starters to the entrees, even to the dessert. And it's at the dessert, as he and his wife are eating, that he reaches inside of his pocket and pulls out a two carat diamond ring. She's tearing up. Shock and amazement are all over her face. And he says to her that this ring is to replace the small ring that I engage or I propose to you with. He called it an upgrade. That's the way in which he will show his affection on this Valentine's Day. There's another woman who's preparing something for her husband. She has dropped the kids off at the neighbors. She's rearranged the house. Instead of lights, she's purchased candles all throughout the house. The aroma of, of, of food, but then also fragrance, fills the home. She has selected, how should I say this, some very nice intimate apparel. She wants her husband to be pampered because of all of the extra hours that he's worked. She has selected this day to show her love and appreciation for him. And upon his arrival, upon him walking inside of the door, he will be treated like a king that evening. There's a fifth grader who is in love with the most beautiful girl in the fifth grade. He cannot attend class because it's virtual learning. But he wants her to know how much he admires her. In his mind, he believes that she is the woman of his dreams. He doesn't know that he's only in the fifth grade. <laughs> He'll relive this a few times but he prepares a virtual Valentine so that as he sends it to her, there'll be a smile upon her face and his affection will be known by her. You know what? I could spend the rest of this day going through stories, past and some that are taking place even today. For, for we all, we all know of some story. We may have been a part of some Valentine's story. The day, the day in which we show our love to those whom we love. I'm always curious as to why we always just choose this day to go above and beyond. Why not every day? Why not, why not show that, that admiration, that love every day? No, every day we can't go to a high-end restaurant. Every day we can't rearrange the home and, and have the kids at the neighbors. But, but, but it's my belief that love can be shown each and every day. Why does the calendar have to read February the 14th for us to put on red and tell somebody we love them? My brothers and sisters, as believers, 
Our faith is rooted in love. Our faith is rooted in the love that God has for humanity. But for us as humans, in our relationships, it's all about giving. Yeah. If, if you really love someone, so we say, that, that there ought to be some action to it. You know that, that love is a verb. It's action. You're doing. But the danger, and I'm, I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade. Whatever you've got planned, go ahead with it. But here's the danger. As you create these once-in-a-lifetime moments, is that what I've learned is, in my years of living, is that once you have an incredible moment, you can't go back after that. How many of you are stressing now? Because you outdid yourself last year. And you're trying to figure out, how can I top this? Love isn't about topping what was done before. Love is about consistency. Love is about understanding. Love is about giving not so much the gifts we purchase at a store, but it's giving that which resides in our heart. And so I wanted to share this message with all of you. Those who, who have someone right now and those who may be single. Listen, we all are in a loving relationship. And it's found here in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. What I love about this is that, is that even when we don't love God, God loves us. God just doesn't love some of us. God loves the world. Even those who don't subscribe to God, God still loves them. That's a different kind of love in and of itself. Listen, if I'm showing you love and you don't show love back in return, guess what? I take my love away. But God says, I created you. I created you so that you might praise me, so that you might love me. But even if you don't love me, good God, I'll still love you. And someone can declare this morning that you haven't always been in a loving relationship with God. But one day you discovered God's love for you. And you've made a commitment to give that love back to God. For God so loved this world that he gave. So listen, so, so, so we got a husband who's planning a, 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 a meal with his wife giving her a diamond ring. We have a wife who's preparing an evening for her husband, treating him like a king. We've got a fifth grader coming up with this incredible uh, virtual uh, love project. We, we, we all find some ways to give. And so the question is, how do you top it? I thought about God. I looked at God this past week and all that God gave to humanity and God gave to individuals. God loves us so much that even God gives. Yeah, God gave Adam life. God gave Abraham a son. God gave Isaac twins. God gave Jacob a tribe. God gave Moses a staff. God gave Joshua feet and a voice. God gave Rahab a scarlet thread. God gave Deborah courage. God gave Samson strength. God gave, gave David victory and a heart for God. God gave Solomon wisdom. God gave the three Hebrew boys company. God gave Daniel a pillow. God is a giving God. God gave the disciples Jesus. God gave the prophets vision. God gave Paul a travel itinerary. God is in the giving business. And my question to you this morning is, what has God given you thus far? Take a moment. Take inventory. Get your praise on right now. When you begin to look at your life, the totality of your life, and all that God has given you, 
You ought to be able to give God praise. That's what I love about God. God simply says, when you discover and when you understand all that I've done for you, just give me praise. Don't hold back. Give me praise. The woman in that restaurant, upon seeing the ring, she couldn't stop crying and giving praise to her husband. The husband coming in after work, seeing the home remodeled, the kids not there, his wife looking attractive, he couldn't help but give her praise. That fifth grade young lady who received that virtual valentine can't help but put a smile on her face and thank that fifth grader who was so creative in presenting this virtual message. My brothers and sisters, there ought to be some kind of reaction when you understand the goodness and the giving power of God. Can you praise God? Can you consider all that God has done and say, thank you, God, for giving this to me? Take roll this morning. You are giving me life. You are giving me breath. You are giving me eyes to see and ears to hear and a mouth to praise. You are giving me food. You are giving me a roof. I mean, there are so many people with so many testimonies. It goes beyond the superficial. Some people can declare, God, you gave me freedom because I, was, I made my way out of jail. God, you gave me a second chance because the doctors had declared me dead. God, you rescued me from financial ruin. My brothers and sisters who Whoever you are, wherever you are, you ought to be able to give God praise because God has given unto you. But how do you top it? How do you top all that God has done through humanity? John 3.16 shows us. For God so loved the world that God gave his only son. You and I, my brothers and sisters, we'll probably spend the rest of our lives, if we have those we love, trying to top the gift we've given before. But Jesus is it. God says, yes. Yes, Adam, I've given you life. Yes, Abraham, I've given you a son. Yes, Isaac, I've given you twins. Yes, Jacob, I've given you a tribe. Yes, Moses, I've given you a staff. Yes, Joshua, I've given you feet and a voice. Yes, Rahab, I've given you a scarlet thread. Yes, Deborah, I've given you courage. Yes, David, I've given you victory. And I've given you a heart for me. Yes, Solomon, you have wisdom. But, but, but God says, I have one more gift for you that will top everything else. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. There is a commercial that um, I, every time I watch it, I just always end up smiling at the conclusion of it. It's a, it's a Hershey's Kiss commercial, I believe. It's Hershey Kisses. I think that's it. And there are kisses um, uh, laying on the floor, and these two little girls are sitting there, and they're, they're talking about how well they know one another and how they're sharing. And, and at the end, um, um, this one girl, I think there's one kiss left, and she reaches out and grabs it, and she gives it. To her friend it's the only kiss left and she's already reached out and she grabbed it and she has it but to show her love for her friend she gives it to her the scripture says that God had one son and God loved us so much that God said to the world here <laughs> now God did not Wow, God, God, God didn't pull up in a 12 camel caravan to impress us with Christ. God, God didn't rearrange the earth for Christ's arrival. It was simply one night in Bethlehem that God said, here, because this is what you need. I don't need another diamond. I don't need another meal. I don't need another, another pair of pants. I don't need, you don't need another dress or shoes. You don't need another vacation. You need Jesus. Hashtag, you need Jesus. 
I need Jesus. And Jesus takes care of everything else. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him, there it is. God says, now I'm giving him to you. What will you do with him? Simply believe. Believe in him. Believe that he can make a way. Believe that he can open doors. And he can close some doors. Believe that he can part rivers. Believe that he can mend broken hearts. Believe that he can dry a weary and teary eyes. Believe that he can give you another chance. You got to believe. You got to believe in Jesus. But not only in terms of how it works for you, but you've got to believe that he is the son of God. You've got to believe that he came and he loved everyone. You've got to believe that he lived a sinless life and he died on a cross. He was buried in a tomb and you've got to believe that early Sunday morning he was resurrected. And whosoever believes, not just the Christian, not, not just the, the Baptist or the Presbyterian or the Pentecostal, but whosoever believes, not just a church member, but even the person walking the street who hasn't been in church all their life, but they believe in Christ, they will be saved. They will not perish, but they'll have eternal life. I thought about it. The husband and the wife, as much as they love one another, that love will come to an end. The earthly relationships we have will come to an end because they weren't designed to last forever. There's only one. And that's the eternal relationship between us and our creator and our savior. So yes, if God has done all of that for us, if this isn't love, then I don't know what is. If it isn't love, I don't know what else to call it. This is love. And in the words, of new addition if it isn't love then why do I feel this way why does God stay on my mind listen I'm in a loving relationship with Jesus Christ and I thank God for it I thank God that God sent his son Jesus to be everything that I need my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you this morning that it is love. It's a love that goes beyond any earthly love you will ever have. It's greater than the love a parent has for a child. It's greater than the love that, that spouses and loved ones have for one another. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond the familial love, the love between brothers and sisters. This is a love that is an unconditional love. That in spite of who I am, and in spite of what I've done, and in spite of what I will do, and in spite of where I'll go, God still loves me. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. My brothers and sisters, I want to wish you a happy love day. I want to encourage you to fall in love with Jesus. I want you to discover the love that Christ has for you. And I want you to give your very best back to him. Whatever it is, give it unto God. Because God has given us God's very best. I pray that you'll be encouraged this day, this day of love. Tell somebody you love them. Tell God you love God right now. Because it is love. It's the love that God has for humanity. God bless all of you, my brothers and sisters. I pray that you've been encouraged by this message. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal and everlasting life. We look forward to having you join us this week. Our word on Wednesday. 7 p.m., same YouTube channel, next Sunday, 10 a.m., same time. Until then, God bless you. 
God keep you. Keep falling in love with Jesus. Amen.